All praises to the Most High for another day of life. Blessings to all the 12 tribes of Israel and to all the Gentiles that will cleave unto the house of Jacob. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to continue reading the Book of Remembrance, Chapter 15, The Tablet of Badal, The Story of Enoch and Ebony, An Account of the Dividing of the Earth, and also of Matzah the Lamb, first revealing fully that he would come in the flesh. Now it came to pass that after Enoch and Edni returned home, they rehearsed all that had befallen them in the land of Towah, and the people who heard it were astonished, for their account revealed a world far different than their own, and a curious thing began to manifest itself with the company of travelers, for with their return home they could not shake off the effects of evil which they had encountered in the land of Towah. And Enoch was very dismayed, for he felt that Matzah the Lamb was distant to him, which thing had not ever occurred before in his life, and Enoch attributed it to his mourning over his son Methuselah. But the problem persisted, and Edney was firm in her resolve to no longer consider the acts of Methuselah to be that for which she could be accountable to Enoki said, and in spite of this, she too felt the burden of the lingering evil that she was subjected to in Towa. And it came to pass that the travelers discovered by conferring together that they each one had acquired feelings in Towa that they could not shake off, and seeing the clothing of the traitors was strange to them, they acted to burn their clothes as perhaps in that way they would be rid of that which they felt. And Enoch went and repented before the Lord for the feelings that lingered in his heart. And the Spirit of the Lord came gently to him. And the Lord said, Enoch, my son, that which dismays you in your feelings is come to you because you were made to be unclean in the land of Tawah. An unclean means that in your soul you feel distracted and distant and alienated from me in your heart and from the elements of creation. And all in your company must purify yourselves in order to be rid of it. And this is the manner in which you may understand what happens to you when you become unclean. While you are in the company of the unclean, and you have unpleasant or accusatory exchanges with them, then fear and uncertainty and intimidation of the presence of evil that suppresses my presence causes their view and the uncleanness of the spirit which dwells among them to settle into your soul. And a residue of it will remain there to cause you to feel distant and removed in your heart from me and from the Erkadeshi until it is removed. And the assurance of our love for one another becomes clouded, and the clarity of it must be restored. And the definitions and interpretations of the Erkadeshi by the wicked and their view of me overshadows that which you are accustomed to in your heart towards us. And your sense of joining with us is also crowded in upon to be diminished and you are caused to reassess your definitions and interpretations of the Ekadeshi. And also, the closeness of our walk together is brought into question in your heart. Therefore, wear no strange or unrighteous clothing while among the wicked, as our clothing has been defined by my father to fill the unfailing love of Anoki said for his children when they find themselves in a temporal world apt to be led astray from walking in the way. And when you are in the midst of the unrighteous, it is a desire of Mozart the decadent to lead you astray. And because he is one of the sons of heaven, your principal Erkadeshi is the most adept at resisting him. And the element of righteousness that will help protect you from uncleanness while you are sojourning among the wicked 
is sand from the waters of a fountain mixed with the principal one among the Erkadeshi to which you are joined, and this is to be carried upon your person. And when you become unclean by interchange with the unrighteous or by your own thoughts or actions which are directed in such a way that you enter the forbidden path of sin which causes you to view the Erkadeshi or your fellows or me in ways that deny our visions of holiness then you must wash yourselves in lustral water mixed with sand so the presence of the living water may return to you and the sand mixed in will bring the proper sense of division between the holiness of your soul and the uncleanness which has crept in to hinder you. And you must wash in the same manner the righteous clothing you wore when encountering the uncleanness. And if your encounter exposes you to the use of the element of wickedness and you are not wearing righteous clothing, then the clothing must be burned. And for Four days you must include in your meals Kelly bread to remove any presence of fear or doubt with regard to your view of me and the Erkadeshi. And if you were exposed to the use of the element of wickedness, the vessels from which you ate or drank while in the midst of the presence of evil that made you unclean must be broken or discarded and set aside to return to the earth. And I saw that after these things were made known, Edney took the vessels that held her fruit upon the table of Methuselah, and she returned the baskets back to the earth, and she broke the bowl from which they drank. And the Lord continued, and he said, The lustral water with which you bathe yourselves must be of such a quantity as to be poured out to form rivulets of water to be viewed as they go forth to run down in their joy. And water from a fountain is well suited for this, if one may be found, as it goes forth naturally in rivulets. And the sand of the fountain should be mixed with it as you bathe, so the Erkadeshi may feel the line of distinction between you and the uncleanness, when the uncleanness is from the sins of your own thoughts, in the denial of the vision of your fellows. And there is another kind of uncleanness that can come to you, and it does not have to do with evil, but it is the uncleanness that comes from the natural passing from this life by the death of a loved one, the living of life, and the awareness that you are always living with me in the midst of creation is the definition of being clean. An intimate contact with death is unclean, as it distracts you away from the joys of living life to the fullest, and in your grief you absorb the feelings of death rather than life, and during the process of natural grieving, it is ultimately the restoration of the joy of living that brings you healing to feel joined with me again, and during the grieving process you cannot remain firmly within the joy of living in your joining with the Erkadeshi in the true definition and interpretation of them. And it is difficult for you to retain your ties with me in our mutual joining in the fullness of life which I bring. And these things come to you strongly when you see the deceased loved one or touch them. And this kind of uncleanness does not affect your clothing or that which you eat upon, but it affects your heart and soul in the distress of your sorrow of grief and in this case your tears become lustral water for your healing and you must not wipe them off for they are holy to me and to all the host of the Erkadeshi and after seven days the bereaved must greet the first light of the day for four days so they may acquire the newness of moving on into their life without the loved one who has passed and I will be there to comfort you and console you in the rich compassion I have for you and my personal presence and the first light of the morning sun will also cleanse and heal you. And this must be repeated each four weeks until healing and well-being is restored and the prayers 
of loved ones may accompany you at dawn, and they may go with you to assist in your cleansing from grief, and in very hard cases cutting your hair off and giving it to lustral water can bring newness to your identity as you grow new hair, and as you move on into your fullness of life, you find comfort and consolation and rich meaning to living once again. And witnessing a murder or coming into contact with the death of a stranger is another more severe form of uncleanness that has little to do with sin. And when you see or touch such a person or witness such an event, four of your companions must participate with you in your purifications of cleansing and renewal with the morning sun, and they must be able to aid you and pray for you according to your need for the duration of your healing. And if a company of you have been exposed to this event, all who suffer from this kind of uncleanness must be able to purify separately according to their need. And they each and their four companions in righteousness may do these things together. And when a loved one dies in your house, you shall rearrange the items in the house to give it a feeling of new life. And after this is accomplished, it must be blessed. And while you are thus bringing the feeling of newness, you are to wash everything possible with pure and undefiled water. And the water is to all be carefully saved. And you are to wash each item with separate amounts of water. And when all is completed and the water is collected, the water is to be carried away to a quiet place. And it is to be poured out in such a way so it forms long rivulets of water to be viewed by all who mourn on either side of it as it proceeds upon the way. And if a stranger dies in your house or there is a murder there, then the house is to be abandoned and removed from the encampment, leaving no remains. And the place where it was must be planted with trees which do not bear edible fruit. And there is yet again another fourth kind of uncleanness, and this kind comes to you strongly when you participate in any act of wickedness or evil, or that which is accomplished under the direction of Mozart the Decadent. And when this occurs, you must wash all of your righteous clothes with lustral water mixed with sand, so that they feel new. And you must wash all of your eating and cooking vessels in like manner, and then you must remove from your residence to live in another. And you must have your hands blessed after the joys of forgiveness come into your soul. And if it occurs once again, then the cleansing is the same as that for the death of a stranger. And after this has been accomplished, the unclean person must remove to live alone away from the encampment until seven years have passed. And during these years, if they intend to return to live in community on the anniversary of their removal, they shall return to the encampment and they must repent before their fellows while they are accomplishing their washings. And they must seven themselves in their determination to never become thus unclean again. And if their fellows are convinced that it has been accomplished after the seven years are completed, then they may return again to dwell in their encampment. But when this fourth kind of uncleanness is done inadvertently, then the cleansing is the same as that of witnessing the death of a loved one. And if the inadvertence is accomplished in a house, the action is also the same. And it came to pass that after the Lord had explained all of these things, Enoch went among the people of Moin, and he taught them all, of the instructions of the Lord to purify away from uncleanness. And Enoch and all of the company of travelers accomplished their cleansing and repentance after the manner that has been written. And they were unclean after the manner of the severity of inadvertently being exposed to the use of the element of wickedness in the house of Methuselah. And the hearts of Enoch and Edney were heavy with the burden of it and when all was done, Enoch sought out a quiet place where he could mourn for his son Methuselah. And he went into the sea of grass east of the waters of our hero. 
And there was a willow tree in the midst of the grasses. And he sat himself down, and he lowered his head, and he wept. For he and his rib and his companions had become unclean by viewing his son and all of his house participating in the acts of wickedness that would cause him to be removed from his dwelling place. And it came to pass that Enoch grieved all that night, and he besought the Lord to forgive his son Methuselah. But the Lord answered him not, and Enoch knew the unforgivable sin had raised an ugly face in the life of his son. And it came to pass that Enoch was not comforted, and the tears of Enoch flowed down to drench the earth where he sat. And when the sun was up, Enoch thought to stir himself to return home, for no hope had come to him through the night. And in his despair he looked about, for he heard footsteps approaching in the grass, and it was Mat the lamb. And the Lord sat down with Enoch under the willow tree, and they wept together. And Matzah did not speak to comfort him concerning his son, but he touched Enoch to comfort him in his heart, and he prayed for him. And the rich understanding of Matzah the lamb entered into Enoch to strengthen him. And the Lord said, I have come this day to instruct you once again for the fourth time concerning how you must divide the earth. But Enoch was distracted in his grief, and he said, Lord, why did Methuselah not want his people to know that I am his father? And, and the Lord turned to his purpose to love Enoch in his grief. And he said, Your son Methuselah spoke thus to you because he came into the land of Tawa as a stranger, and no man knew from whence he came, and they knew not any of his kindred. And seeing he could find advantage from this, and by the example of the masters of the society of Seku, he has asserted to his fellows that he is a son of God, and that he can be a father to the sons of God, and thus he has been deceived by Mozart the decadent, who also wishes to be the son of God, and he has put forth to them that because he is a son of God it is his right to rule over his fellows and he has placed a mark upon his body by removing the flesh of his foreskin to indicate to his fellows that he is a son of God and therefore he can rightly rule over them and once a year he affirms to them that he is thus marked and thus do all the masters of Seku and in your heart, when you asked him through your hireling, if he had a father and a mother, it was your way to introduce to him the joy that his father and mother had traveled to visit with him. But Methuselah had cursed himself with many oaths according to the manner of Seku, that he would do nothing to reveal the secret of the mark and the question of saying, do you have a mother and a father or not, threaten his position to rule over his fellows, and your presence there could expose him to all whom he ruled over. And the Lord continued speaking, and he said, and the practice of this mark will be taken into the world that will emerge after the waters of filthiness flood over all of the wicked in the land of Helia, and it will be passed down to the people of a far distant day by one named Japhet, who is a descendant of Methuselah. And the people of Shai-Iri shall find among them in that day those who are filled with deceit, and they shall attribute the practice of the mark to their principal father, who is called Abraham. And they will do this intending to elevate him to the station of those who rule over their fellows among the nations. And there shall be one called Nahabin, who shall be prominent among the children of Abraham, who shall refuse to take the mark or support such practices, because he will know me and know that I am the only begotten of my father, and he shall not have the mark upon his body, nor will he mark his sons. And there will come a day that I shall inherit the mark of the men of Seku, 
upon my own body, for the practice of it will descend down from generation to generation until it is found among the people to whom I will be born. And Enoch said, O oh no, Lord, how can that be? And the Lord said, I will have a body of flesh like yours. And Enoch said, How, O oh Lord, shall you obtain it? And the Lord said, I shall be born of a woman, and she will be a descendant of Methuselah. And it came to pass that Enoch mourned greatly, and I saw it with Urim, and I wept together with them, and my heart was broken for Enoch, for he saw that the wickedness of his own son would contribute to that which would afflict the life of his dearly beloved Mots of the Lamb. And he was about to be overcome in his grief, but the Lord put his hand upon him, and he comforted him. And the Lord said to Enoch, Your mother Kaba shall come to my mother, and she shall announce my birth, and she shall reveal the vision of my created purpose to her. And Kaba shall bring to my mother the spirit and presence of Eden to walk with her. And it came to pass that Enoch wept again at the thought of a mark that is an element of wickedness being placed upon the body of flesh that was to be for his lovely Mats of the Lamb. And Enoch thought, Can the inheritance of Seku go on forever? And the Lord said, When I am resurrected to live again, the mark shall not go with me, for it is the element of wickedness, but it shall remain upon the earth until the end thereof. And Enoch said, Lord, is there no one who can go for you? And Enoch laid his hands upon the garment of the Lord, and the Lord said, It is the task that I have been given by my father, that I should follow the handiwork of the loving kindness of my father, who are all of the children of men, and I must follow them out of the natural world into the temporal world, and I must follow to go with them whithersoever they go and all through the course of the earth except in the beginning with Mawin and in this end with the holy city all of the righteous of man are corrupt in some degree or all together and it is my task to find a means within the context of those religions to bring salvation to as many as will love me and love my father and in this way I must be subject to their sins and corruptions in both their lives and in their religions. And there are other marks upon my body that show that I am subject to the corruptions of religion in my obedience to the will of my Father. And because they are the marks of obedience to Anoki said, they are the element of righteousness upon me. And they shall remain to always be with me, even from before the beginning. And when I find my body of flesh, men will do whatsoever they will to me, according to the task that I have been given, and all I do must be in the midst of sin and corruption, for that is the place where I am sent to rescue the loved ones of my Father. But the wicked will say that only an uncorrupted religion can bring salvation, thus in the life of every person. I must submit myself to their individual expressions of religion, and in this environment I may find a way to bring them salvation, even according to how they will choose. And in the end, you will see that I am both the Father and the Son. For I have three names, and they are Kai, and Enoki said, and Mats of the Lamb, the one who has healing and forgiveness to bring. And you will see that all those who love me and who are sincere will be redeemed to live with my father in the midst of Eden and in the presence of Elda. And it came to pass that Enoch said, Lord, are these the marks you speak of on your hands and feet? And the Lord said, They are. And Enoch and the Lord spoke quietly together as he looked upon the marks. And Enoch durst not ask further concerning the marks, and that which brought them there, for the pain of it would be too great for him to bear in his love for Mats of the Lamb. And it came to pass that the Lord approached once again to instruct Enoch in how to divide the earth. And the Lord said, I come this day to bring to you your fourth instruction, 
as how to divide the earth. And Enoch was overcome, and he still lingered in his heart upon all that had been said to him. And he said, Matzah, my beloved, are you then to be the son of man? And Matzah said, It is as you have said, I am indeed the son of man. In the begetting of both my body, when I am born of woman, and also of my spirit, by the great acts of the righteous. And I will be subject to my parents, and to my society, and to the religion into which I am born. But be comforted, my son, for there will be many who will prepare the way before me, and I will be loved and supported by many, and my religion will be holy, and it shall be restored in the purity of it according to the best ability of those who love me in that day. And I will rise triumphant to overcome each obstacle, and I will accomplish the tasks that I have been given. And the day will come that the earth will rest, and all of the righteous will find great joy in their redemption. And the Lord said, Come now, let us prepare for the task of dividing the earth. And Enoch drew his strength around him so that he could be instructed. And as I beheld with Urim, I saw that Enoch stood strong for the Lord in his old age and in the midst of his hard trials. And the Lord said, When you divide the earth, it will be a force that changes the course of the world. And truth and righteousness will sweep over the earth and among my people it will begin, and it will flow out and spill over, and it will cause the end of the society of Seku. And your son Methuselah will not rule over any of his fellows in that day, and his calamity may bring him to a place where he has the desire to repent. And if he chooses to do so, he will not be cast off. And there will be no person upon the earth that will not be influenced by the division of the earth and the people of Moin, even those who are strong in their virtues and in their love for my father must come together and give of their souls to accomplish the task. And this is the manner which you shall perform to establish the division of the earth and any portion of that which I will tell you may be used to re-establish it altogether, or to some degree, according to the level of urgency that is required, or it may be used to direct the division of the earth to a place to bring relief when the forces of evil come against my people. Those who are prominent in the virtue clan must act to remind the Ekadeshi to keep themselves in the way of understanding and in the way of the truth. And they shall declare to the Erkadeshi by the sound of a trump that they are to be obedient to all of that which is about to transpire in the division of the earth. And they are to be diligent to see to it that they remain steadfast to all that has been established concerning them by our first parents in Eden and also by all of that which occurred during the first great sevening in righteousness. And those who are prominent of the service clan must establish among the Ekadeshi a clear reminder of the truth of the view that Yatakad and Kava had of the man which the Ekadeshi have in them. And they are to petition the Ekadeshi to pay careful attention to that which is asked of them by the men of service. And the Erkadeshi are to tenderly establish all of their instructions in their hearts forever. And the women of this clan must impress upon all of the Erkadeshi in all their several hosts the desirability of the full effects of the great loving kindness of my father. And because of these women, Every living soul among those who are holy in creation will be found to be whispering of the grandeur of the wonder of Anokiset. And those who are prominent in the protection clan must instruct 
the Erkadeshi, and the importance of protecting the people of the holy city, Mawin, and they are to address them with instruction in their diligence to listen to the men of service in this regard, and they are to rehearse to them after the waters of sweetness are poured out upon the altar all the levels of urgency of the protections of the divisions of the earth and all the hosts of the Erkadeshi are to be well instructed by these women concerning the safety and welfare of the righteous and your ceremony to, to establish the division of the earth shall last for 22 days in the inception of it and all of the clans together shall establish according to my word the function of the four quarters of the earth which are reproval and living life and forgiveness and the hope of my father and there shall be four mothers of children who are also the wives of the men of Ishad who shall petition the dwelling places of all of the sons of heaven upon the earth for both the Erkadeshi and the Derkadeshi. And these women shall approach to view the earth as their home over which they have charge as the mothers of the objects of creation and they are to speak with the authority which they have to designate their desired place for everything even as Kaaba did when she said the stone is mine and I want it brought to our dwelling place. And when this is accomplished ever after, the Erkadeshi will view the earth as a possession of the righteous women of Anokiset. And all of the sons of heaven will hear their words. And those who do not obey must await the dreadful day when they are compelled to comply according to the power of righteousness which resides in the holiness of the women who love my father and your principal man of Abara and his rib shall instruct the Erkadeshi in all of the ways that I have directed you and they shall herald the names of all of the sons of heaven and they shall relegate the Erkadeshi with their names to the stations which the four mothers desire and after this is declared and put in place, all men upon the earth will come to view the sons of heaven in their relegated stations. And the men of Abara shall set in motion all the voices of the four directions, and they shall make these declarations from time to time for a specific need for protection and well-being. And in these declarations they shall proclaim that from the east shall emanate marvelous voices with feelings that can tell the righteous how they and Anokiset are doing together as a father and his child walk in the way. And they shall proclaim that from the south shall emanate their marvelous voices with feelings that can tell the righteous that they can be happily attached to the circumstances of their lives and they shall proclaim that there shall be marvelous voices from the west that shall speak to the righteous of the rich joys of forgiveness in the presence of my father and they shall proclaim that from the north shall emanate voices that fill trust and faith that no matter what the circumstances the loving kindness of my Father will in the end come to you and give you peace and comfort. And the men of Abara shall recount the former divisions day by day that I have required of you in times past to reestablish them. And they shall recount the first great sevening into the ears of all of the Erkadeshi using the waters of sweetness. And they shall declare by the sounds of many trumps that henceforth the truth shall once again be found to be independent in the midst of creation to act for itself and it will make no distinction between the righteous and the wicked and they are to assign to the Erkadeshi their proper task in that which they will say to all men and also with regard to the guidance and counsel 
which they will bring to them when they grope to find their way, and again they are to declare to them how they will present themselves to man and every nation, land and country. And the men of service shall direct all of the Erkadeshi to be obedient during all the rest of the times of tribulations to the voices of those who are the principal men of service who are known to walk with Finocchi And they are to ascribe rich meaning to the four quarters of the earth and see to it that everything is distinct to be understood by both the people and the Erkadeshi. And my father shall abide to act by that which they shall ascribe. And when the day arrives that they are to approach to set in place the understanding of the Erkadeshi and the understanding of the presence of the man, let only those who know him be present to do the instructing. And let their instructions come into the ears of Ebedel, who is sandstone insomuch that she will balk at any assigned task that does not point to the man. And let the men of Abara set in place the twenty-four conditions among the Erkadeshi that will be their foundation for finding the man who is in the midst of all element. And so the Erkadeshi may speak for my father according to his will. And it shall come to pass that my holy people shall all come together on the twenty-second day to establish the decrees of creation with a mighty hand, and they shall declare them to all things above the earth and to all things upon the earth. And the sound of it will find those who are hiding in the depths of the earth where they have been relegated to dwell, so that their faces are hidden from the face of my Father, and they shall be thoroughly reminded in the recesses of their darkness, of the truth that was brought to creation in Eden by Yatakad and Kaaba. And the men of service shall preside over all of this ceremony, and they shall firmly set in place to be immovable that man is the object of creation. And because of this, the tragedy of the rebellions of their Derkadeshi will become known to all the children of men upon the earth and all of these things must be done by the sound of a trump. And it will come to pass that when you do these things, the strength of Mawin shall issue forth to sweep over the world. And I saw that it will be as it was in the days of Enoch, for in his day it was the first time the decrees of creation had been heralded in the temporal world. And those same decrees shall be established anew at the end of days. And the truth shall be declared to be eternal, and it shall come to pass that the view of creation, as seen through the eyes of Yatsakar and Kaaba, will be established among all of the holy forces in creation. And in this way, the truth will be given authority to act by a mighty hand, and the truth will seek out and find all of the places where the lies of men are lurking to lay hold of their prey. And in this way, the heart of my Father will be comforted, and all of the righteous will be blessed, and all who live by lies will see that they are undone. And because of these things, all through the course of the earth, the wicked will be brought to shame by their deceits, and the forces of darkness will find a disadvantage in their dependence, and Mozart the decadent, and all of his band, will have their lies exposed to see the light of day in the hearts of all of the inhabitants of the earth. And the joy of my people will be full because of their faith, and knowledge of the truth will be expanded and affirmed, and the earth will be comforted, and all those whose lives were made to be weary will sing songs of joy, and the earth will arise to shake off the lies of evil, and it shall be rid of the torment it has found because of the wicked, and the shaking of the earth shall break up the foundations of the great deep. And thus I end my instruction, and now, my son, 
Go to and perform your task, and I will walk in your midst. And the Lord left off from speaking to Enoch. And Enoch was left sitting under the willow, and he arose to depart. And he went home, and he rehearsed to Edney all that the Lord had told him. And she bore up strongly at the news, and all she heard regarding her son. And in her heart she had set aside her grief for her son, in her determination to do the task which lay before her. And it came to pass that Enoch began to prepare the people to divide the earth, and it gathered all of the people who would assist in the task according to the leadings of the Spirit, for each of the twenty-two days had specific tasks to be done, and those tasks could only be carried out with the power that arose out of the deepest feelings and convictions of the heart. And the Erkadeshi solemnly prepared themselves to respond to their lovely ones in Mawin, and everything was prepared according to the exact tenor of the instructions of Mats of the Lamb. And the men and the women who prepared were dil diligent in their virtues, and strong in their love of repentance, and they walked with power from on high, as they commenced to gather at the altar of Asuf. And it came to pass that the sound of many trumps resounded over the waters of the Aral Sea, and all of the sons of heaven were brought to be attentive, and the Derkadeshi were filled with dread. So great was the dominion of the righteous in Mawin, and a great calm covered over all of the earth, and each day for twenty-two days the sound of the trump was heard, and every task was carried out with clarity, and with the power of the presence of Anoki said, and it came to pass that on the tenth day the barren waste places of the east of Mahuja broke asunder and the crevice of Senesil was no more and fire and the cinders of brimstone rained down upon the high places and the element of the waters of bitterness was enlarged and it pursued after the Derkadeshi and it found them in their hiding places and they drank from the cup of bitterness and the dominion of the righteous filled the earth. And thus the days passed until all was done according to the word of the Lord to divide the earth. And the truth moved out in the strength of it, and it proceeded forth to be a blessing to the righteous, but it was a curse to the wicked. And the words of Matzah began to be fulfilled, and desolation began to come to all of the wicked, and it began in the house of Enthusamer, for across his threshold came the sands of division. And his servant, who was the hireling of Enoch, to ask Methuselah if he had a father and a mother or not, began to spread the tale abroad that his master indeed did have a mother and a father. And he said that he had seen them and said that he had heard Methuselah call the woman mother, and all of those whom Methuselah ruled over rebelled against him, and it openly reviled him, and he was driven forth into the empty places of Helia, and his encampment was left empty and desolate, and it began to be covered, to be hidden from the face of Anoki said, by the winds and the sands of the earth. And the masters of Seku sought to find Methuselah because he had bound himself with curses to not reveal the secret of the mark that was intended to declare that they were the sons of God and they considered that he had betrayed them in their secrets. And it came to pass that Methuselah was hunted by them until the news of the lies reached their own people. And it came to pass that they too were diverted in their pursuit of him and they found their houses to be turned against them, and all those of this secret order were brought to great distress because they had become lazy by living off the labors of others, and now they must find a means to live alone in the waste places of their country. And they made attempts to gather around themselves those who would give them any kind of support, but all the people in Helia and Tawa were in commotion, and every man was willing to rise up to slay his fellow, and the society of Seku was no more. And stout men who were filled 
with the rage of Senesio, stole women and children, and began to band together, and their Nephilim children moved out across the land, looking out with the empty eyes of ones who have no conscience. And thus the truth swept through the lands of the wicked, and their hearts were exceedingly hardened towards their fellows. And no man knew anything of the spirit of repentance, but only thought upon revenge and survival. And never since man left Eden had the children of men who chose wickedness become so desperate and vile. And Mozart the decadent began to know his time was short and he raged in the hearts of those who were his own and those who would listen to his voice. And in those days Kohath the son of the beggar woman was murdered and Methuselah sought to find the Lord and whether he repented or not no one knows and all of the land of Tawa became empty and without inhabitant for all the people went into the low places of the land of Helia and they dwelt by the waters of the seas there and all of the hearts of the wicked were filled with fear and terror filled every breast and the smoke of violence rose up from the face of the earth and all things came before the face of Noah. And it came to pass that all was astir also in the land of Moin. And the truth came to the people there to bless them. And their little children told tales of walking with Matzah the Lamb. And they began to see him and to recount that which he would tenderly teach them in the way. And those who long were halt between two opinions in their faith found the strength to be confident to choose the right way and to abandon their pride and faith grew in Moin and the interchange between the righteous and the wicked ceased and the righteous were filled with compassion for one another and there came a great healing to the hearts of those who had been persecuted by their fellows among the wicked and the knowledge of the man began to expand and to burst forth with power and great glory and the hearts of the righteous began to be drawn into oneness and the weak and simple things of the earth were come to their place in their likeness of Anokiset. And the animals became tame, and the spirit of Anokiset covered the land in Mawin and entered into all the living souls there. And it came to pass in those days that Shehairi, who was directed by the Lord to take his journey to the south, to the place whereof it has been written, began to feel the effects of the resurgence of the truth and he exclaimed to his fellows that great things were transpiring in the midst of all the earth and it came to pass that Noah alone with his family remained in the land of Tawa and he dwelt in the regions of the Helais river overlooking the land of Helia and Lamech was slain for the sake of the knife when he was walking in the way and thus came the effects upon the earth and all of the inhabitants of it, of the division of the earth. And it came to pass that the compassion of the righteous ones in Mawin began to bear fruit, and they tenderly brought along with them those in their midst whose faith and strength of spirit lagged behind. And all of the people began to be joined to all of that which is holy in the midst of creation, and to Anokiset, and to one another, and the rocks of Eden on the west of the river Simca were at last brought to comfort and it came to pass that Mats of the Lamb was seen daily in the settlements of Moin to be walking in the way and many gathered around him to sit with him to hear his words of instructions and he taught with such power that it transformed the righteous insomuch that they came to be familiar with the man who is in the midst of all things and they sought him out. And their youth and children walked with him often. And all of the Erkadeshi in the eastern portions of the land were at rest. And the power of the presence of Anokiset began to be magnified in all the land. And Esib no longer had a season, but came to be found to be ready to harvest whenever the righteous had need of it. And thus I come to fulfill all that the Lord has instructed me to write with Urim, and I was about to write more, but the Lord forbid. 
for he said that the destruction of the wicked and the translation into heaven of the righteous must not be written. For it is expedient for the righteous in the last days to come to know of these things of their own accord. And it is not met that they should follow any account or instruction by, by man in so great things. And I make an end. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. That is the end of chapter 15. Thank you, great Holy One, for your loving kindness endures forever. We thank you in the name of your Son, Matzah the Lamb, and the Holy Spirit, Kai. So be it. Blessings, family. Shalom.